phrase, cosmic joke, was part of my lexicon. My naivete was thinking that the joke was that none of us get out of here alive. Recently, it occurred to me that the cosmic joke is that we never completely figure out our shit. Or learn who we are. Or know our nature. Or, by the time we really know who we are, the movie is over. At least that's the way it seems. Buddhism seems to help reconcile this. I am not a Buddhist. I am interested in figuring out shit. I figured that by the time I was in my 60s, I would have most of my shit sorted out. One thing I figure is that you don't have to be great or even good at anything. Not even what society says you must be good at. I'm certainly not good at much. I'm not a painter. I'm certainly not a writer. The only thing I really want to be good at is my relationship with self. Ever have the realization that the person sitting next to you doesn't really see you anymore? Both of you have been passengers on the same train for quite some time, but then the filter goes to noir and no one is as they once were. Welcome to a strange crossing. After my first husband died, I lived with my brother and his wife for three months. In retrospect, it wasn't the best of choices for any of us. I was very broken and a refugee of my entire life up to that point. Looking back, I can see that I was too disruptive in my quest to reclaim my life. In the decisive moment, my brother said to me, My problem with you is that I keep thinking you are my 18-year-old sister, and you aren't. We're both older. You are different. I'm different. We aren't the same. I agreed. It was done, and I was gone about a week later. Have I done this same sort of thing with others? Viewing them through an old scratched up lens instead of actually seeing them as they are right now? Of course I have. I think about this with every holiday or birthday gift I give. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. Maya Angelou said that. It took me nearly 60 years to figure out that the only person who needs fixing is no one. What we need is to be seen, to be heard and accepted just as we are. Early on during the pandemic, I got really frustrated with my spouse for a behavior of his that I had been trying to control since we met. It was a make or break moment, but not the one I anticipated. I'm going to sit quietly for the next little while, I announced to no one in particular. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't take phone calls or answer emails. I didn't go out, didn't socialize, took a social media break, didn't paint, draw, write, or design a damn thing. I sat with my thoughts, sometimes just observing them, sometimes asking myself, where did this come from? Dr. Gabor Mate says that trauma isn't necessarily what happens to you, but how you deal with what happens to you. Everything comes back to trauma. A lot of my creative work is born from trauma and loss. My life's work is to give voice to the unspoken agreement of silence. Silence isn't always acceptance. It's our little secret. Silence is what well-behaved women do. We won't talk about this again. Silence can be suffering. I'm fine. Silence can be rage. I have no words. Silence can be dangerous. I know someone who insists that meditation is silencing the mind. I disagree with this. Meditation is a witnessing of mind. It is an exercise in not engaging with monkey mind chatter. It is an exercise in being present. It is an exercise of breath. Breath in, breath out. Between, a bird sings. Haiku, do you? It's true. 
How someone reacts to you is more about them than it is about you. Go sit with your thoughts for a couple of weeks and see how people respond. Very few will say, that's cool, see you when you get back. Somebody will inevitably insist on being a hero. They will want to make it all better, but not for you. It's not that they want to kiss your boo-boos well. They fear that if you take the time and space to do your own work and get it sorted, you won't need them anymore. You are part of my world because I walk away from our time together feeling both enriched and loved. My life is made better because of your being in it. 30 years in, I'm not in love. Don't forget it. This is more than a silly phase I'm going through. Romantic love isn't really about love. It's about fucking. Fucking make-believe. It's a daytime television trap. When I was 16 or 17, I read one romance novel. I felt dirty afterwards. No, I take that back. Not dirty. Violated. The stories were pornographic, and I'm not talking about the sex. The reading audience was gaslit into thinking that subjugation and rape, when packaged with pirates and cowboys or other material for fantasy, was romantic. And romance meant desire, and desire was what we were told we wanted, over love, over being seen who we are. So no, I'm not in love. Don't forget it. 30 years in is not a silly phase to be going through. Jeff told me early on not to expect him to flower me with romantic gestures. I was fine with that, saying that I expected any sort of gestures to be authentic and not prescribed by Hallmark or capitalist social norms. Otherwise, I'd think he had something to confess. The philosopher Slavoj Žižek says the one measure of true love is you can insult the other. Long-term committed relationships are far from being romantically perfect. They are a constant negotiation and a struggle to balance both autonomy and togetherness. It's you and me, asshole, against the world. Being honest with oneself isn't easy. As I sat with myself, ego, monkey mind, and my macaw were all up in my shit telling me what they thought I needed. What I really need, I thought, is for the three of you to shut the fuck up. I stopped paying attention to all the noise. Then it occurred to me that what was happening in my relationship was not being done to me. Not everything is about me. My reaction, however, is. I am not the only one who has experienced trauma. Compassion is hard work. It's not merely a sympathetic response to another's suffering. You must put yourself in the shoes of the other in order to learn about them. It's about understanding, and understanding is not capitulating your values. Barky, look at me! Kukui screams. Kukui is a Catalina macaw. We've lived with her for 25 years. I am Varky. The thing about a bird besides the noise and the destruction of your furniture, cabinets, and shoes is that they teach you about who they are. That is, if you can get past the arrogance of human supremacy and pay attention. Barky, look at me, she screams from the top of her cage. I see you, I shout back. I see you. Mm -hmm.